Hey everybody, Zach Sashay from Greensock here. Today I'm going to walk through some of the exciting improvements that GSAP 3 brings with it. Let me start with this GSAP 3 logo animation. Nice, right? As you can see, this is all familiar GSAP 2 code, which generally runs great in GSAP 3. But we've made a bunch of improvements to the GSAP 3 API that allow us to simplify code like this. For example, in GSAP 3, tween max, tween light, timeline max, and timeline light have all been consolidated into one tween and one timeline class, which are accessed through a simple GSAP object. So here, instead of having tween max, we can switch out GSAP. And instead of this duration parameter, we can put it within the vars parameter by saying duration 1. GSAP 3 also has a more simplified, condensed string format. And so I can switch that out with a lowercase, get rid of this middle stuff for now, and just leave the configuration object, making sure to close this. But if you wanted to have an elastic in or elastic in out, you can just do dot in or dot in out. But I'm going to leave it with the default, which is out, because that's what it was before. In this second function, I'm going to go ahead and make the same improvements from above. So switching out Dween max for GSAP, putting the duration inside of the vars parameter. 0.7 and switching out the ease for the string based ease that we saw before. But there's one other improvement that we can make in GSAP 3 related to this function, and that's related to staggers. Because in GSAP 3, every twin can have a stagger, so you don't need specific stagger methods like this. You can just use a regular two and then put the stagger within the vars parameter. So here it's using a simple stagger, but you could use a more complex one if you wanted to. For this third function, we could go through and make the same improvements, but I'm going to save us some time and just paste it in there and show off one last feature of GSAP 3, and that is keyframes. Keyframes are a way to pass multiple vars parameters into the same tween if you have the same target for all of those tweens, which can really save you some time. Instead of having to do timeline.2 for every single tween, you can just do it once and then pass in this array of vars parameters. Another thing that it lets us do is pass an ease to be used on these tweens like it's a sub timeline. And to do that, you can just say ease and then whatever ease you want. So I'll use power three dot in out, for example. I hope you can see from this short demo, even though it's showing off just a few of GSAP 3's new features, that GSAP 3 can save you time and hassle. Before we end this video, I want to show you a few other new features in GSAP 3. First, here's the all-new Motion Path plugin. It makes animating any object, SVG, DOM, canvas, whatever, along a path extremely easy. In this demo, I'm moving a car image along an SVG path using only a couple lines of code. It's almost too easy. Here, we could have passed in the direct SVG path values or given it an array of X and Y coordinates to use as well. But GSAP 3 also has a Motion Path Helper plugin that's also available to Greensock Club members that lets you edit an SVG path directly in the browser. And so here, it's perfect because we're able to drag any of these control points and move them to where we need them to be without having to go back and forth between Illustrator. This demo also shows another one of GSAP 3's handy features, defaults for timeline tweens. So here, the timeline has a defaults object with duration, ease, and immediate render inside of it, and these three values will get passed into the vars parameter for every child tween that it has. It's extremely convenient to prevent having you from repeating yourself over and over again within the same timeline. Of course, these values can easily be overridden if you need them to, simply by giving a tween a value for the inherited property. Let's take a quick look at this demo. In this demo, the background color of our page changes based on the x-coordinate of our mouse. However, in the very edges of the screen, it locks into a particular color. Creating something like this could get a little messy, but it's very straightforward using GSAP 3's new utility functions. So here, we have four different utility functions being put to use. Pipe takes a value from one function and passes it to another without messy function calls. This also makes changing the order of function calls very easy to do. Snap takes a value and snaps it to a given range. So here, within 100 pixels of the left side, it'll snap to a value of 0, and within 100 pixels of the right side, it'll go to, to a value of the window's inner width. That value is then passed into the map range utility function, which maps it to the range between 0 and 1. And that is then passed into the interpolate function, which can literally interpolate between just about anything, whether it's numbers, objects, or some strings. Here, we're using it to interpolate between an array of color values. 
And so all together, when we pass that into a mouse listener, we can get the effect that we got here with just a few lines of code. There are many other utility functions. For a full listing, check out the docs below. Have you ever done a staggered animation and it felt a little boring because it all happened linearly? With GSAP's advanced staggers, you can make it a lot more interesting with ease. In any GSAP tween, we can easily animate an array of elements like this from the start, center, or end by using the from parameter. So if I say from center, you can see that it'll start to animate using the centermost element and animate towards the outside with our, the effect that we have. And this is just as easy to do in 2D. So if we increase the number of rows here, and then we also say grid auto, so that GSAP automatically detects the grid for us, then you'll be able to see that the effect starts in the very middle of all of these elements and then animates out towards the rest of the elements. This video is just the tip of the iceberg showing you what you can do with GSAP and the improvements that GSAP 3 has. For more information about the exciting features of GSAP 3, read more in the links below, play around with it for free on CodePen, or download it from the GreenSock website today.